we have to decide how to spend our time. There's lots of different things we could do. Grounding certainly sounds safer than anything else I could imagine. But the question that a lot of us want to know is how much benefit is there? We assume we believe there is benefit to it and we like the idea. But to make the commitment to really every day take a two hour walk barefoot on the sand or the soil, um, is this um, a big deal? Is this like, in other words, there are hyperbaric oxygen chambers that cost more than $15,000. And my mind suddenly thinks, wow, maybe, maybe that's really does something great because it's this cool new technology where what you're saying is just walking on wet soil. And I'm thinking somehow, is, is this really something that powerful or is it just nice and, you know, help, you know, a little good? Well, I've spent 25 years supporting the research developing a handful of products, producing a book that's now sold over a million copies, uh, have one movie that's had 60 million views, one that's only had 4 million views so far. And yeah, what I've been doing primarily is putting most of my energy in getting the studies done uh, to help people understand what it is, and then to develop a handful of products for the people who can't go outdoors or can't get, get back to nature and so on. But anyhow, the, um, so it's an, it, everything is an educational movement, but here's the significance of it. <clears throat> it's like when you put your bare feet on the earth or that you're electrically connected to the earth with a pad or anything else, then you're going to equalize electrically with the earth. The earth is negative about 20 to 50 millivolts. So what that means is you have an abund abundance of free electrons that are able to move quickly and rapidly reduce charge. That's why we ground everything in the electrical and the communications industry, is to prevent charge, to prevent lightning from getting into a home or to prevent static electricity from creating noise and interference on lines and goes on and on. <clears throat> but anyhow, so what we learned, I mean, the issue was this, and it took a long time to, to figure this all out uh, because in the beginning I thought it was you know, EMF and all that kind of stuff. But then later we realized that it's really grounding alone. It's really the negative charge of the earth on the body that is uh, the mechanism of action. So the first thing that happens, and we've got, we have studies on all of this. The first thing that happens is when you put your bare feet on the earth, you're gonna stay there 15, 20 minutes, your blood viscosity normalizes. What that means is the little red blood cells, they all have a negative, they all have yeah, they all have a surface charge, an electrical surface charge, and they and and it's negative. But so when you stand on the Earth, the negative surface charge on the red blood cells equalizes with the Earth. The significance of that is, and in, in the subjects that we measured, was before the blood is all thick and sticky. You have a lot of rouleau formation. You just have a lot of fibrogen, everything in it. An hour later, the blood is all separated, nice and. And, and it's, it's like Dr. Sinatra said, blood's like red, thin like red wine rather than thick like ketchup. And uh, <clears throat> so anyhow, how that happens is when you stand barefoot on the earth, the red blood cells become more negatively charged, about 300% increase in the free electrons that are on the surface of the red blood cells. So them being more negative, it's like little negative mat, uh, magnets, metaphorically. And you, when you put them, push them together, they push each other apart. So the red blood cells being round with a negative charge, they're gonna repel each other. That thins the blood, normalizes the blood viscosity, and then the blood can get in and out of the capillaries and more properly oxygenate the tissue. And <clears throat> so anyhow, this is our most natural state as a human being, because throughout all time we lived on the earth, our bodies were always negatively charged. And, and we didn't until about 1960 is when it really took place is we started wearing rubber sole shoes. And then we started, that's when we invented plastics and we started creating the synthetic materials for the shoes. And then we carpeted all of our homes and we plasticized everything. Even our steering wheels are now plasticized. But anyhow, so we lost that negative charge. Exponentially, we, you know, from 1960, to 19, uh, you know, 1920 or 2020. Today we have 95% of all people wearing synthetic sole insulated shoes. Back in um, 1960, it was 90, 
Uh, 90% of the people who are wearing leather sole shoes are going barefoot. So anyhow, there, there's been a dramatic change, but in this same 60 years we're talking about that we started wearing uh, synthetic, synthetic sole shoes, the, <clears throat> you've seen the rise in uh, autism, diabetes, and uh, you know, cancer, all of these inflammation related health disorders all have been growing exponentially for the last 60 years. To put it in perspective, 60 years ago, uh, a visit to a practitioner was, you know, uh, probably 90% was, you know, infectious disease, childbirth, and, and uh, um, acute injury. Today, 99% of all visits to a general practitioner is for an inflammation related health disorder. Uh, so, anyhow, the, so the focus of what I did with grounding was to lay down the facts. Uh, if there's a reason, and it comes to me naturally because I spent 30 years in the communications industry. You, have, you ground everything electrical to maintain internal electrical stability of the you know, functioning of the equipment. Well, the human body is the most electrical thing on the planet. Every cell is electrical. Every transaction in the body is electrical. And if you have a shortage of electrons, you've got a problem. But here's the real bottom line of it. Most people, inflammation is, well, it's from uh, this and that or a hundred different reasons that cause inflammation in the body. And I think they're all correct to a degree, but the problem is the reason inflammation manifests and takes hold in the body is because the immune system is compromised. And so if you have a pathogen in the body, you're gonna have a neutrophil. I mean, the, if the immune system recognizes a neutrophil is gonna swim over, encapsulate it, and it's gonna release reactive oxygen species. Reactive means it's, uh, it's electrically charged and it has enough voltage to strip electrons from a pathogen. And that's how the immune system destroys pathogens and damage cells. So if you do not have enough redox potential or enough free electrons in the body, then those, some of those excess radicals will, if they're not neutralized in nanoseconds, they're gonna reach over and, and uh, steal an electron from a healthy cell and damage it Another message goes back to the immune system. The immune system sends another neutrophil or white blood cell to clean it up. And the same thing happens over and over again. And so this is how chronic inflammation manifests. So the problem isn't, isn't all of the things that cause inflammation. The, the, the problem is we're no longer naturally grounded. So our immune system is dysfunctioning. It's now busy fighting the fire of inflammation that it itself is creating because it's fighting the excess radicals that would have normally been naturally grounded if the body were grounded. And so then when we're, uh, you know, when we have all of these, you know, radicals or whatever, that, you know, the, you know, the air, the whatever we're, that we do that affects the body, food-wise or mental, all these things, if your immune system were working properly, your body could handle most of it. But the fact that it is not grounded, it, the immune system is getting more compromised, more compromised, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, health disorder manifests, and uh, you end up with a this disease or that disease or whatever. When there is really one problem, the, it's all about the immune system. No matter what anybody says, there's only one healer, one thing that can heal the body, and that's the immune system. You can do things to help it and support it, and that's what you're all talking about here, and it's really important, all of it but it's really, the focus needs to be on the immune system. And the number one reason the immune system is compromised today is grounding. We've put this down in studies. We, it's not something that's gonna to get to the world. It's gonna take 40 years. It took 60 years for us to get in this mess. It's gonna take another 40 years. You've got to ground the shoes. You've got to ground, them. you have to ground everything in your living environment. You have to value add. I mean, you have to add something that's conductive to your seating, your flooring, your shoes, your bedding, uh, wherever you walk, sleep, or sit. Because being grounded is part of your immune system. It what maintains the immune system electrically stable. It is very important. Otherwise, I wouldn't have spent the last 25 years, maybe 20 million of my money, I would, you know, uh, doing this because it's it's that important. Thank David, you. David and a few others have worked with me over the years, and um, everybody's kind of helped and brought it along. And... Uh, we have a few million people grounded. We have sold millions of products. China has sold tens and tens of millions of products. 
uh, earthing products uh, via Amazon and so on. So we're the small player, but we still are doing the research and, and trying to educate the world and get the message out there. It's really important, especially for the younger next generation. Mm -hmm.